good evening all welcome to the new session we will try to see some uh, important barium spotters which are very useful for exam going students so coming to the first case you can see there are multiple serpiginous filling defects noted in the lower one third of the esophagus so whenever you see these type of multiple serpiginous filling defects or lobular filling defects noted in the lower one third of the esophagus suspect uh, uphill varices on the corresponding CT, you can see these are the multiple eusophageal and paraesophageal varices in the lower one third of the eusophagus. Here also you can see there is multiple serpiginous ill-defined filling defects noted in the upper one third and middle one third of the eusophagus. These are nothing but called downhill varices. So remember uphill varices in case of portal hypertension where you can see multiple eusophageal and paraesophageal varices in the lower one third of the eusophagus. Whereas downhill varices are nothing but they are from the cephalite to caudal direction and usually seen in upper one third and middle one third of the eusophagus, usually seen in higher up obstructions of SVC that is supervenacular obstruction in mediastinal tumors or any other cause causing supervenacular obstruction. So remember uphill varices in case of portal hypertension whereas downhill varices in case of um, supervenacular obstruction. Uh, this is a case of large outpouching seen arising from the lower one third of the esophagus just above the diaphragm. This is a case of epiphrenic diverticulum. So I will try to show all the four diverticulum for your reference. So this is epiphrenic diverticulum just above the diaphragm. This is traction diverticulum noted in the middle one third of the esophagus. Here these are both are located in the upper one third of the esophagus. This is Killian Jamison's diverticulum usually on the anterior and anterior lateral aspect usually on the left side just below the cricopharyngeus muscle. Here this is a Jenkins diverticulum arising from the posterior and posterior lateral aspect of the upper one third of the esophagus at the level of upper esophageal sphincter that is cricopharyngeus muscle that is tightening of the upper esophageal sphincter or cricopharyngeus muscle there will be herniation of the mucosa and submucosa through the Killian's dehiscence. This is case of a Jenkins diverticulum. So remember this is epiphrenic diverticulum at the level bell, just below the diaphragm above the diaphragm in lower one third of esophagus. This is traction diverticulum. This is Killian Jamison's diverticulum usually and the anterior and anterolateral aspect in the upper upper one third of the esophagus just below the cricopharyngeus muscle. This is Jenkins diverticulum at the level of cricopharyngeus muscle. This is also seen in upper one third of the esophagus. Next here you can see there is abnormal uh, bleeding and dilatation of the there is bleeding and dilatation of the lower one third of the esophagus. Here also you can see the can abnormal uh, bleeding and dilatation of the middle and lower one third of the esophagus. So this is a case this is nothing but appearance is called corkscrew esophagus or rosary bead esophagus classically seen in diffuse esophageal spasm. So these, these are nothing but there are abnormal contractions leading to compartmentalization and curling of the esophagus giving this corkscrew and rosary bead appearance. So remember corkscrew, this is corkscrew and even rosary bead appearance seen in diffuse esophageal spasm. Next here you can see there is diffuse uh, narrowing of the lumen of the stomach. Here also there is narrowing of the lumen of the stomach. This is also narrowing of the lumen of the stomach and here also you can see there is diffuse narrowing of the lumen of the stomach. So this is classically described as water bottle stomach and classically seen in linitis plastica which is nothing but cirrus adenocarcinoma where there, where there will be diffuse submucosal infiltration causing the causing luminal narrowing. So remember water bottle stomach or linitis plastica. These are varied appearance of a single disease that is linitis plastica causing water bottle stomach. Here also you can see there is large hiatus hernia and there is herniation of the stomach into the thorax and the thor in the stomach is also abnormal ori oriented. So this is nothing but large hiatus hernia with organoaxial gastric valvulus. So large hiatus hernia with organoaxial gastric valvulus. Next here also you can see there is a abrupt cutoff at the level of second part of the duodenum. Uh, you, and the contrast is not seen beyond the third and fourth part of the duodenum, but later in due to due to change of the position in prone and lateral positions, you can see there is a can passage of the contrast slowly into the third and part of the esophagus, third sorry third part of the duodenum, and also into the third and fourth part of the duodenum. So whenever you see abrupt cutoff at the level of second part of the duodenum as a band, typically suspect supermesenteric artery syndrome, where there is compression of the second part of the duodenum uh, between the acute angle between the supermesenteric artery and the aorta. Next here also you can see there is a there is a diverticulum here, there is a hiatus hernia and even faint gallstones are seen here. So this is nothing but so gallstones, these are the gallstones, this is the hiatus hernia and this is the diverticulum. Here this is the zoomed image you can see these are the gallstones. So whenever you see gallstones with hiatus hernia and diverticula suspect Saint Strad. Next here you can see this is a barium enema showing reduced caliber of the rectum 
and this is the transitional zone and followed by enlarged caliber of the sigmoid colon so this is whenever you see diffuse narrowing of the rectum followed by a transitional zone and followed by enlarged caliber of the sigmoid colon definitely suspect hirschsprung's disease so this is a case of hirschsprung's disease next here you can see this is a single contrast barium enema you can see multiple colonic diverticulum you can see multiple colonic diverticulae and also you can see while doing the barium enema you should not see contrast in the bladder so because of the abnormal fistula tract or communication between the colon and the bladder you are able to see uh, contrast in the bladder while doing a barium enema so this was a case of multiple colonic diverticulosis with colovesical fistula so this is that uh, colovesical fistula and here also you can see this is a upper gi endoscopy upper gi barium studies you can see uh, barium in the stomach but whenever you're doing the upper gi endoscopy you should not see contrast along with the stomach you should not see contrast in the colon so here you can see there is a abnormal fistulous communication between the greater curvature of the stomach and the left transverse colon so the contrast is seen passing through the stomach into the left half of the colon so this is that colon left off of the this is the colon and this is the left off of the colon so this was a case of gastrocolic fistula so this is that gastrocolic fistula next here you can see single contrast barium enema where you can see multiple uh, cystic intramural cystic gas collections so there are multiple intramural cystic gas collections noted in left half of the colon so the, whenever you see multiple intramural cystic gas collections or filling defects in the colon definitely suspect nematosis cystoides coli nematosis cystoides coli so this is a condition where you can see multiple intramural cystic gas collections throughout the colon next so we will see few complications this was a barium swallow while during barium swallow there is aspiration of the barium into the trachea and tracheobronchial tree with complete uh, you can see the segmental segments segments of the bronchi uh, so this was a case of barium swallow with aspiration into the trachea and opacification of the tracheobronchial tree and even rare complication is uh, barium enema intravasation where you can see the barium noted in the liver and spleen and also barium noted in the pouch of douglas so this was a case of barium enema intravasation and this is the journal which i have taken this is barium aspiration during barium swallow thank you all